That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Life Ahead, which will be available on Netflix as of November 13th, 2020. It is the third uh, feature directed by Eduardo Ponti, who is the son of Sophia Loren, uh, who headlines oh. this film. It is her first, you know, not Oh, yet. it's not a cartoon. No. Oh. I thought this was animation. No. What were you just watching that was animation? Wolf Walkers. Oh. Anyhow, Life Ahead. Sophia Loren's first uh, feature since 2010, uh, in 10 years. Sophia Loren's in this movie? She's starring in it, yes. How old is she? Like 86. Does she look good? She looked pretty good. Oh, yeah. good for her. Yeah. Does she, she wear glasses? Pretty spry. No glasses. No. You, oh. get, you get her little cat eye. Good for her. <laughs> um, as So I, th that's all I really knew about this film. I haven't seen uh, either of Ponty's two previous features, or um, he directed his mother in a short version of Jean Cocteau's The Human Voice in 2014, which of course Pedro Almodovar remade once again uh, with Tilda Swinton in his English language debut this year. Um, so I haven't seen anything that he's uh, directed. Um, but Sophia Loren, of course, uh, you know, I'm immediately interested. Um, sure. What is this film about? So, uh, as I was watching it, I didn't I, I was like, she's playing a woman named Madame Rosa, and based on what she's doing with children, I'm like, God, this is very familiar. It's a remake, which I didn't know going into it, of a film that I love uh, that is not available uh, widely uh, from 1990, 1977 called Madame Rosa, uh, starring Simone Signore, directed by Moshe Mizrahi, which won the... Um, Best Foreign Language Oscar for film that year, and won her a Caesar. Um, the original is about a ex-prostitute in Pigalle, a uh, French, a seedy French district, and she uh, has devoted her elder years watching over the abandoned children of other prostitutes. Uh, and she's also a uh, survivor of Auschwitz. So the only thing that is similar in this, because this is set in modern-day Italy, uh, is that Sophia Lorenz, Madame Rosa, is also a Holocaust survivor, um, but that's about it. She's not an ex-prostitute. So what does she do? She uh, basically, she's this elderly woman who uh, is paid to take care of, uh, she has one child living with her, uh, and she then inherits uh, the main character of the story, Momo, played by Ibrahima Gaye, uh, who a doctor uh, asks her to look after because he's also old and can't give him the maternal figure that this child needs. He's a, a young Muslim immigrant. How old is this kid? Like 11. So she it's raises this living. kid. But very reluctant. It opens with him snatching her purse. That's filled, that's, she has these candlesticks in that she's wanting to use to pay. That's what she wants to pay for rent uh, that month. Uh, but the doctor... Wait, wait, wait. This is modern time? Mm -hmm. And she wants to pay her rent with candlesticks? I get. Well, it's Italy. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know their arrangements there. Okay. Um, so he snatches her bag of candlesticks. And the doctor, who has kind of inherited Momo, who is an orphan, uh, kind of recognizes this. At the same time, uh, Momo... Uh, Wasn't Momo that social media thing that went around with the that, weird face? That kind of looked like a sickly Shelley Duvall. Not to be mean, I mean, like... Anyway, uh, Momo uh, is also working for a local drug dealer um, peddling drugs as well. Okay, we had a technical difficulty. So, Momo snatches uh, Mama Rosa's bag of candlesticks. Mm -hmm. It's okay. returned to her, uh, and the doctor says, will you take care of this child for me? And she, of course, refuses. He says, I'll give you 750 euros a month. Uh, she says she takes him in. Uh, and, and then, slowly but surely, they begin to form a bond. Uh, but just as he kind of... Uh, he, he has no... Uh, inkling of what the Holocaust is, and she, uh, her safe space is to actually go into this subterranean room underneath the building where she relates that's how she grew up as a child, feeling safe under the barracks in Auschwitz. Uh, so he knows, which is integral to this version's plot, uh, where her hiding place is because she's slowly and surely starting to exhibit signs of dementia. So this poor kid is abandoned, he's just starting to kind of... Um, feel c comfortable in this living environment, she's losing it. Uh, so she actually ends up being carted off to the hospital, but she made a pact with him that said, don't ever let me die in a hospital. There's a pact in the first film too. But, uh, 
So he actually goes and steals her out of the geriatric ward at this hospital and carts her back and keeps her in the basement until uh, she dies. Oh. There's also another resident in her building. It's a trans woman named Lola uh, that has uh, her own things going on because uh, she has a son that she's going to bring back to visit her father. Uh, so that's going on in this film as well. Um, it, it's actually based on a book by uh, Roman Gary, who used to be married to Jean Seberg. Um, who his, his works ended up being the impetus for a couple of uh, films starring her as well. Um, yeah. Sounds like an emotional tour de force. It is. Uh, the kid that plays Momo is really good. Uh, Sophia Loren, I, I think, is also quite effective. Um, it doesn't get schmaltzy or try to belabor the point too much about this bond between these two people, uh, which, which I liked. I think that has more force because you see him not really understanding her as she's losing her mind. He thinks she's faking it because, you know, he has some abandonment issues. Um, so it actually ends up being really touching. Uh, How what, much time like, passes throughout the film? Several, several weeks, not that long. Oh! Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not so that he long. has to do all of that mm -hmm. only knowing her for a few weeks? Yeah. Wow. He also imagines this lioness coming to visit him, which is kind of some crunchy CGI. Uh, I think that I wish they could have done something else with since they didn't have the budget to make it look as good as it should have. But um, Like Rogue? But it's not as bad as Rogue oh, with Megan well, Fox. Uh, it was shot by Angus Hudson, who uh, was the cinematographer on Sean Ellis's Cashback, uh, which w was kind of a calling card for that director in the mid 2000s. Um, I, it's just welcoming to see Sophia Loren back on screen uh, since it's been so long, and I hope that uh, there are a couple other things that she'll be featured in before it's too late. Uh, Overall, I would give the film 3 out of 5. Anything else? No. Bye. Bye.